This is the brand new Zhiyun Cinepeer 3E. Now we've seen gimbals like this before on the market, so what makes this gimbal different than its other gimbal siblings? Or maybe cousins, depending on how you look at it. Weighing in roughly as the same as the Crane M3 at 990 grams, with all the features of a pro gimbal you could want with your standard POV shots, pan, follow, lock mode, you name it, it's in there. And of course, the vortex or inception mode. Even the new vertical orientation on the gimbal plate that helps make creating vertical video shots on a gimbal that much easier. And it even has the same payload as its big brother, the Weeble 3S at 6.6 .6 pounds, which is a huge upgrade from the Crane M3. And for as small and lightweight as it is, I had one question as soon as I knew that this gimbal was coming out. Well, maybe two questions. Well, actually three questions. Number one is how would this gimbal compare to using Sony's dynamic active stabilization? The second would be, could this be your best all around gimbal that you could use no matter if you're taking it on the go for things that you wanna do for content creation or even use it in scenarios if you're doing videography, for example, and you need to use it on a shoot. Would it work in both scenarios or would you need to get something else like the Weeble 3S? And the third one is, what if you wanted to use this gimbal for vlogging? Would it work in this or is it a little too big? So let's put it to the test. Now I wanted to see what is it really like using this gimbal in a real world scenario. I had to do this sales video shoot for a launch that my friend slash client, if you will, is working on right now. And so we worked on the copy and hashtag all the things. And so now it's time to go and record the video. So first up was some reveal shots. For me, I wanted to see with the joystick, I was used to and expecting it to be more flat, like I've seen in some of the other Zhiyun or Zhiyun gimbals, but this one kind of protrudes a little bit. That didn't bother me. I just wanted to know what I accidentally hit it too hard or what have you. It seems to be balanced pretty well because I can navigate it very easily. And as I'm moving, just kind of start to pan a little bit. And it's just those really micro adjustments that I wanted. It's nothing really super hard to do. It just was making sure those micro adjustments, it wouldn't jump ahead or jump the gun. But the star of the show was this guy. This was by far the best addition to this. The fact that they added a quick release plate system that I can still attach the tripod legs at the bottom. This wrist bit may not seem like much, or if you're not using a setup that's super heavy, may seem like, oh, I don't need one. I promise you, you want to get one. I would be thinking the same thing, like, nah, it's, it's not worth it. I promise you it is. Just the fact that the fatigue you may feel on your forearm, mus forearm in English, your forearm muscles or your wrist, I promise you it is it is just worth getting. And I'm so glad that I got a chance to put this to work as well. Because so when I did this next shot, this is where it saved my bacon. And I knew if I wobbled as I'm doing this aerial shot, just a really simple, almost like crane shot, if you will, I wanted to come up from the top and then come down to do a very even shot. And I knew if I wobbled and I started doing that early on, I would be no good trying to get this shot later on. And to my surprise, I nailed it. So just doing my small pan shots, doing any of the aerial shots that I wanted to get because I did want to try it a couple times just to make sure I had options in the edit. And I was very surprised because I thought at some point I would get tired of carrying it and be like, okay, that's enough. And I was really shocked that did not happen. So of my three things that I wanted to see, it checks the box for just everyday content creation use. If I wanted to use this for myself, as well as take this if I was doing videography work and whatnot. But I wanted to see how would this compare to Sony's dynamic active stabilization. And if gimbal vlogging is your jam, then how would that work out too? So now we're doing vlogging mode. We do got a little bit of background music, so hopefully the DJI will be able to block any of that. And we're on active right now. I think having some digital stabilization and then having the gimbal still works well because that is so much less that you have to do in post-production when you're done. So that way, when we get back, there's very little that we might need to do in Catalyst Browse, if anything, or just use the regular warp stabilizer in Final Cut. But this is what it looks like on active mode. So now we're at standard stabilization on the ZV-E1. And because I'm using the 10 to 20 uh, lens by Sony, then you'll see some of those uh, vignetting all around the corner, some of that black, those black bars, or just vignetting, it's proper terminology. And it's still very stable. 
very stable. And now we are on dynamic active. Again, nothing special, just trying not to do a little bit of a waddle and whatnot. Yeah, the Sony ZV-E1 looks great for the dynamic active stabilization and by far the best that I will ever get handheld until technology gets even better. But I still see that buttery smooth goodness that a gimbal has. And even though dynamic active can be gimbal like, it's not exactly crushing it, at least not in my results. Now, for me looking at the clips, it is still a clean difference as far as clean being defined as it just is even. You don't see as much warbling because the gimbal is really stabilizing it almost at no matter what the settings are. But when you are just vlogging and hand holding, you do get a little bit of those jitters. So your mileage may vary with that, but it's still very close. What did you think about the footage? So I've thoroughly enjoyed using this gimbal, but what are some of the cons? What are some of the drawbacks that if you're trying to make a decision potentially on if this is something worth picking up or not, or at least worth trying, then let's see what evens the scale out. One of the big differences that you'll notice right away is that there is a space where the LED light was, but there's no LED light there. Maybe a third party like Ulanzi will make something that maybe is a magnetic that we can just use a little chiclet of an LED light or something, or, you know, maybe we'll just stick to just regular LED light panels. I'm not sure how useful it's been overall in the market. So your mileage may vary there, but just so you know, it's not there. The second con, no touchscreen. On some of the other sibling gimbals, you'll notice that there is a touchscreen option that you can use. On this one, you're going to be using the buttons in order to navigate more specifically the wheel that is also a quick wheel as well that you can press in to enter and select your options. This is not a bad thing for me because if I'm thinking about, let's say when the weather changes and it gets colder outside, you're going to have gloves on. I don't want to be beholden to using a touchscreen, but I do like the options of having it and just choosing not to use it or disable it versus, you know, just not having it all together. But your mileage may vary depending on if you like that kind of stuff or not. Those are the two major cons that I've noticed over the last couple of weeks of using it. And I'll definitely keep my eye out to see what else are some other differences and similarities as I continue to use it in my daily use for content creation. But when I look at it, I'm like, would this earn a space in my kit? And who would this gimbal be best for? A big thing that I'm on when I'm choosing gear is whether or not I will actually use it or will it sit around and just collect dust and it becomes something that you eventually sell. For me, I can easily see this fitting into my kit because number one, it is not exhausting to carry with me. The thing with any piece of gear and equipment is are you going to want to keep using it over time? And the more heavy and annoying it is to take something with you, the less that you actually will take it with you because you don't feel like carrying it around. I didn't feel that when I was carrying it in my book bag or when I was using it at the shoot all day, as well as creating and getting those nighttime shots. The second thing for me is, is it annoying for me to use or do I get tired of using it? Simply from like the arm fatigue and stuff like that. The answer was no. It was very much so easy to switch back and forth. Um, and just keeping the tripod legs on there was nice because I could easily deploy it and sit it down, or I could just rest it on my hip if I was just waiting or changing settings or something without it feeling like, gosh, I'm ready to put this thing down. I didn't feel that personally. And number three is that I like the fact that it made getting some shots that I've really been wanting to do for a long time super easy to do because what you see on YouTube versus what you can actually pull off with your skills, there's sometimes a wide chasm of a difference. Whereas gimbals, they've continued to improve time over time. And so I wanted to see, would this one be the best all around gimbal? And I think for me, it actually is. So who would this gimbal be best for? I think if you are a nonprofit, if you have a church, if you're doing any kind of volunteers, or if you own a business and you want to have something in your kit, I think this is a great middle ground. So if you want something for those walk-in talks or vlogs or what have you, this will fit because it is the same weight as the M3 with the same payload and strength of the Weeble 3S. If you are a speaker, if you are an author and you're doing like book signings and stuff like that, the fact that AI technology and stuff is coming to our cameras, like I love the fact that the Sony ZD-E1 can follow me around, but the fact you can connect this to the app and it'll track you 
and walk around with you. That's a plus. The fact that you can connect it to your camera, adjust the settings on the fly. That's a plus. The fact that it's not annoying to carry around because it's not heavy. That's a big plus. And I think with all of these boxes, check this, in my opinion, just as a first look at this gimbal is a great all around one. But I do want to see how would this really compare in an apples to apples comparison with the Weeble 3 S. We're going to be covering that video later on the channel, but let me know what else would you want to see around this gimbal or what tests would you want me to run with this gimbal? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. You want to stick around and make sure you get that boomerang again. When I publish another video, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Let me know what else you want to see down in the comments and I will see y'all later.